This might be our most controversial video yet. Which Disney park is the best park in the entire world? Find out as we rank every Disney theme park across the globe today here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Okay, this was a hard video to make. I'm still not sure we're right on all of these. There's something to love about every single Disney park around the globe, no matter where they end up ranking on today's list. But there are definitely some Disney parks that stand out way above the rest, and some parks that are getting ready to dazzle future guests with brand new attractions that we are very much looking forward to seeing ourselves. So today we're gonna rank the domestic and international parks from least to greatest, while also telling you why there's a lot to anticipate in the Disney scene, no matter which park you're getting ready to visit soon. We had the opportunity to check this out when it first opened, so you can watch that full review video over on our channel after this. But one of the biggest shockers coming to Disneyland in the future is a full avatar area, similar to what you can find in Disney's Animal Kingdom, we think. We don't know much about this new Disneyland area just yet, other than it's been confirmed by Disney CEO Bob Iger at the beginning of March. So we'll make sure to let you know just as soon as we hear more about what this project is gonna morph into later on. So we're gonna start with Walt Disney Studios in France, so in Disneyland Paris. You may be surprised to find that the very bottom of our list is one of the Disney Paris parks, but we've got our reasons for that. Walt Disney Studios Park is the second park in Disneyland Paris. Think of it like a mashup of Hollywood Studios in Orlando and California Adventure in Anaheim, but like the mid-2000s version of California Adventure before its major glow up. So the park has two unique rides to it that you won't find anywhere else. The first is Cars Road Trip, which isn't as good as Radiator Springs Racers in DCA, but it's still very nostalgic for people who knew Hollywood Studios during its MGM days, since it's technically a re-theme of the Backlot Tour attraction. And the second unique ride is Crush's Coaster. This is a spinning roller coaster themed after that totally roaches sea turtle from Finding Nemo. Now, I guess you could argue that the recently released Avengers Assemble Fight Force Coaster which opened back in 2022, is technically unique, but it's also just a re-theme of Rock and Roller Coaster. So, you know, if you've ridden Rock and Roller Coaster before, it's the exact same thing with none of the black light signs and more Iron Man projections. Along with a few other attractions like Ratatouille Adventure, Tower of Terror, Slinky Dog Zigzag Spin, and the Flying Carpets over Agrabah, the total ride count in this park is 11, with no real dark ride to speak of. Mostly, you're gonna get coasters and flat rides. Even with its shows like Frozen and Music Musical Invitation, Mickey and the Magician, and The New Together, a Pixar musical adventure, Walt Disney Studios is a fun way to spend the afternoon, but not really a destination park in and of itself. But Alice in Wonderland fans will be happy to know that a new show is coming to Walt Disney Studios super soon called Alice and the Queen of Hearts Back to Wonderland, which the website describes as a pop rock face-off where you're going to be in charge of how the ending of the show plays out. Hmm, intriguing. And later on in the future, Walt Disney Studios Paris will be getting a whole new area centered around the Kingdom of Arendelle, which, I don't know, the mixture of Marvel, Toy Story, Frozen, Ratatouille, and Animation Studios in general feels like a hodgepodge of ideas with no real connections other than all being owned by Disney, but that's just my two cents, and it's still exciting to see some more movement happening in this park. Frozen has had quite the Disney takeover lately, which you'll see during the rest of today's video, but when this new Walt Disney Studios land opens up, the park will receive new character encounters and restaurants and shops. We'll more than likely see this area start really taking shape by 2025, though no exact opening dates have been announced for it just yet. But hold on, Walt Disney Studios isn't done with those future expansions. They're also planning a new Tangled theme attraction for the park, which will be inside the new gardens that lead into the upcoming Frozen-themed land. So Walt Disney Studios Paris is trying to expand and be a more worthwhile visit, and we're excited to see just how much it improves over the course of the next few years. So pros on this one. Select unique attractions you won't find anywhere else, like Crush's Coaster and Cars Road Trip, recent Marvel and Pixar editions, and coming soon, lots of new attractions and areas. Cons for this one though, you're not going to find those animatronic heavy dark rides like Disney is usually so well known for. And as far as the rides that they do have are concerned, none of them are really going to stick out as an all-time favorite Disney attraction. Maybe Ratatouille, maybe Tower of Terror, but you've got those in other places too. So this park is good, but not great. This is also a half-day park that you can easily knock out in a few hours. Not necessarily a bad thing, but also a big reason why it's not a destination park in and of itself. And it's very small. Half a day worthy, if not less. Rank 6.5 out of 10. 
Next on our list is Disneyland Paris. So first you need to know that Disneyland Paris still has a lot to love about it. The design of Disneyland Paris was inspired by romantic fairy tales and real life castles of its European setting. So this park truly is the fairest of them all when it comes to beauty. With arguably the best Disney castle in the world, complete with a giant Maleficent dragon hanging out in the dungeon below. It's also worth noting that there's actually no Tomorrowland in this park. Instead, you've got Discoveryland, which is like a futuristic steampunk area where you'll find a totally unique version of Space Mountain that's not only the fastest Space Mountain across all of the Disney parks that have it, but it also includes three inversions and indoor-outdoor sections too. Fantasyland has quite the standout Alice in Wonderland attraction here called Alice's Curious Labyrinth, which places you directly in the Queen of Hearts shrubbery maze, where you're going to encounter lots of interesting magical creatures straight from this wacky Disney tale. Not to mention, Disneyland Paris has those awesome castle drone shows that happen right before the nightly fireworks take off. Currently, you can watch the Electrical Sky Parade, which is reminiscent of the classic Main Street Electrical Parade and features over 500 drones across the night sky. You can see this show until the end of September of this year, and if you get the chance to, I highly recommend it. So that all sounds great, right? So what makes Disneyland Paris rank so low on our list? While the park is beautiful and the rides are fun and sometimes it snows here, which is very cool, other parts of the park leave something to be desired. Operations aren't quite on a par with the other Disney parks. And while there's over 30 different places to either grab a meal or a snack or a drink here, the quality is a bit lacking. That being said, Disneyland Paris has been using its 30th anniversary milestone to get back on track with major refurbishments to key attractions. That list includes extensive reimagining of Pirates of the Caribbean and Phantom Manor, that's France's take on the Haunted Mansion, with a lot more improvements and additions to come. Disneyland Paris is still a work in progress, but it is looking better and better as more love and care is put into it. Pros on this one, European architecture is worth the visit alone. Plus there's a castle dragon, I mean, come on, and lots of refurbs leading to more park improvements. Cons here right now, operations need improvement, food offerings are underwhelming, and other than the parades and fireworks and drone shows, there's not a whole lot of shows to see here that'll help you break up the afternoon back-to-back -back rides. Rank seven out of 10. Shanghai Disneyland is next on our list. This is the newest park of the Disney Park family, so it still has a lot of growing up to do, but it's doing a good job of that, especially recently. Shanghai Disneyland is where you're gonna find the original Tron light cycle power run coaster, as well as probably the coolest Pirates of the Caribbean version of all time, Pirates of the Caribbean Battle for the Sunken Treasure, which uses screen technology and state-of-the-art animatronics to give you a whole new spin on the classic dark ride. You can find this Pirates of the Caribbean nestled inside a unique to Shanghai high section called Treasure Cove. Treasure Cove features lots of other interactive activities, including the Shipwreck Shore play area, the Siren's Revenge pirate ship, and the Explorer canoes, similar to what you're gonna find in Disneyland California that nobody will ever ride with me. Also, can we talk about how the ropes course in this park, AKA the challenge trails, are like the coolest ropes courses out there? These trails will take you across adventurous terrain, like behind waterfalls and echoing caverns and archeologist dig sites. Even the grown-ups are gonna wanna scale these courses just to get a good look at all the gorgeous scenes. While this park is gargantuan in size, it can still feel a bit empty in parts. And look, I'm all for experimenting with different park areas because that's what makes the different Disney parks around the world appealing to visit in the first place. But with that being said, Mickey Avenue here doesn't quite hit the mark like Main Street USA does, which kind of kills that wow moment when you first enter the park. It's still pretty, but not quite as goosebump worthy and makes us miss our dear old Main Street area. But you know which section of this park is completely bustling and full of life and wonderfully goosebump worthy? The brand new Zootopia area, which opened just this past December. This area of Shanghai Disney is so very cool. First of all, it's got its new headliner attraction, Zootopia Hot Pursuit, where you'll be assigned to back up Officer Judy Hopps and Nick Wilde, who is now officially a police officer, by the way, in a police chase full of action colorful scenes and stunning, literally stunning animatronics. Then there's the unique way you can interact with the Zootopia citizens in a one-of-the-kind live entertainment experience meant to bring Zootopia's residents to life. This is very, very cool. Characters appear and interact among themselves and sometimes even with you throughout the day from the windows of Zootopia's colorful and iconic buildings. This is kind of like, remember when they used to have the Muppets in Liberty Square and they'd like talk to you and stuff? Yeah, kind of like that. Now let's not forget about the snacks here too. There are several Zootopia-fied eats and drinks available at Jumbo's Cafe with recognizable snacks like the iconic paw-shaped popsicles and Officer Clawhauser's 
favorite donuts. So pros for Shanghai, brand new Zootopia area, probably the coolest Pirates of the Caribbean ever, and lots of interactive elements and areas to explore. Cons, the layout kind of feels awkward at times, and Mickey Avenue doesn't quite live up to Main Street USA. Also, the park still has so much room to grow, and we hope it continues to do so. Rank 7.5 out of 10. So Hong Kong Disneyland may not be at the tippy top of today's list, but it totally would be if I were just judging it based on dark rides alone. And that's because Mystic Manor, hands down, is the coolest dark ride maybe ever, in our humble opinions. Mystic Manor is Hong Kong Disneyland's take on the Haunted Mansion, but has a completely unique backstory. Lord Henry Mystic is an eccentric adventurer and member of the elite society of explorers and adventurers, and his manor hosts an extensive collection of artifacts and relics from his travels, but there is one particular particular piece rumored to have something very magical about it that may just send you on a daring and exciting dark ride journey alongside Albert the monkey. Seriously, Disney, can we get this ride in the US parks too? But like, don't replace Haunted Mansion or anything. We want them both. Okay, thanks. Bye. Oh yeah, there are other parts of Hong Kong Disney too. Should I probably talk about those as well? Yes, even though we love you Mystic Manor. Now, while Hong Kong Disneyland has a few alterations made for it to fit into the culture and scenery of its location, it's got a few Disneyland duplicate attractions too, like It's a Small World, Mickey's Filler Magic, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Mad Hatter Teacups, Dumbo the Flying Elephant, and other familiar attractions that you'll see copy and pasted throughout lots of the Disney parks. When you pit Hong Kong against other castle parks though, you're not gonna have have as much to do here as you would at, say, Disneyland California or Tokyo Disneyland. More on those later. However, Hong Kong Disney does have one of the most impressive Disney castles of all time, the Castle of Magical Dreams, which replaced its original Sleeping Beauty Castle back in 2020. Unlike the other Disney castle parks, the Castle of Magical Dreams isn't strictly owned by one princess, but by all the princesses, becoming an impressive beacon of all our favorite girl power stories over the years. Hong Kong Disney also has a brand new area, World of Frozen, which opened back in November of last year. Now we got to experience the grand opening of this new Frozen section, which you should totally check out on our channel. We got a whole video dedicated to it. But spoiler alert, we were really impressed with it. In the world of Frozen, you can indulge in unique food like the forest mushroom pasta and the coronation sundae, purchase great merchandise like Frozen themed headbands, little wooden clocks, tons of magnets and ornaments, and ride new and newish rides like the family coaster, wandering oak and sliding sleighs, and the revamped Frozen Ever After with way better animatronics than the projected face animatronics you'll find in Epcot's version of the ride. And of course, you can meet fan favorite characters like Elsa and Anna, Kristoff, Oaken is there, even a baby troll named Mossy. Now, while this new section of the park isn't humongous by any means, it's definitely a much needed attraction to a park that still has room to grow. Pros here, Mystic Manor, Mystic Manor, Mystic Manor, New World of Frozen area, and the castle itself. Cons, not a huge park. You can see it all within a day or two. And there are transition between lands that can be pretty awkward here too, much like Walt Disney Studios Paris. Also, don't go on the wandering Oaken coaster expecting it to be this major Frozen themed ride. It's fun, but it's basically a watered down version of Seven Dwarfs Mine Train in Magic Kingdom. Not as fun, not as long. Rank 7.5 out of 10. Okay, we have made it to our first domestic Disney park, Disney California Adventure. Now, if it were up to Bria, Disney California Adventure would earn an even higher spot on today's list. She'd probably put it at the top. There's just a whole lot she really loves about this park, from Cars Land to Pixar Pier to the World of Color Nighttime Spectacular to the Animation Academy to Avengers Campus to seasonal festivals to the super fun and slightly spoopy Halloween party, Oogie Boogie Bash. And yes, I agree with her. This is an incredible park. All of these parks are incredible parks, but we have to rank them, so some of them have to be down here. Anyway, what makes it even more impressive is thinking about how far it's come as a park since it first opened back in 2001, when people pretty much wrote it off as a flop. Never forget Superstar Limo, y'all, never forget. Now, I know that DCA isn't everyone's cup of tea, especially since it suffers from the same sort of inconsistencies that other parks like Hong Kong Disney and Walt Disney Studios Paris also suffer from. Disney California Adventure has had a bit of an identity crisis since opening, but DCA has been slow rolling improvements ever since, with more improvements and additions on the way. The most recent addition that's been added to DCA is the San Francisco area. I guess it's not really an addition. This is a refurb. It was originally called Pacific Wharf, but in summer of last year, it was reimagined into the location where the animated film Big Hero 6 takes place. 
While several of Pacific Wharf's iconic eateries have been rethemed to fit the new San Francisco area, many of those iconic Pacific Wharf snacks and entrees we've grown to know and love over the years, like mac and cheese in the bread bowl, did stick around even after all these changes took place. You've still got the clam chowder, the beer ramen, the seasonal bread puddings. Now, a couple of years earlier, back in 2021, we also got to step into Avengers Campus for the first time here. This led to new MCU-themed quick services and the new Web Slingers A Spider-Man Adventure ride and tons of opportunities to meet and greet with your favorite heroes. And guess what? Disney's not done with Avengers Campus yet. Far from it. In September 2022, Disney announced that a new attraction will be part of an upcoming expansion of Avengers Campus. Though the name of the new ride hasn't been announced, we know that we'll get to battle villains, including the new King Thanos from everywhere and everyone in the multiverse, alongside the Avengers and their many, many allies. Now, from what we've seen, this is going to be a lot like Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, so we'll see how that evolves. But anyway, we have a soft spot for DCA, Bria specifically, and dare I say, we're just really proud of how much it's improved since that original first impression. Pros for DCA, vastly improved park since its original opening. It's got that incredible Halloween party, Oogie Boogie Bash, that will sell out every single year, and very unique seasonal festivals. We love a food booth. Going on to cons, it can feel a bit discombobulated between areas, and there are definitely more thrill rides here. Not a bad thing, but some attractions may not be as younger folk friendly. Also, the OG theming of this place is confusing. Why visit a park with California icon replicas when you could just visit the real California icons instead? Anyway, ranking 8 out of 10. All right, it almost hurts me to put Disney's Animal Kingdom as fourth out of the Disney Orlando parks. But once again, I cannot base this list off of my feelings and my feelings alone. So I'll just hurt my own feelings instead. Now, much like Shanghai Disney, Animal Kingdom breaks the mold in terms of creativity and imagineering with its numerous animal exhibits and walkthrough attractions, one of a kind rides and Broadway level entertainment. And while I could easily fill an entire day in Animal Kingdom, just sitting in the lounges and taking in all the sights and sounds of this incredible park, there's no denying that it falls short in the rides category. Currently, Animal Kingdom only offers seven rides park-wide. And while some of these rides are absolutely phenomenal and definitely still worth checking out, like Flight of Passage, Expedition Everest, Kilimanjaro Safaris, that's still not a whole lot of rides to fill your day with, making this a half-day park or less for a lot of folks. But even with its minimal ride options, Animal Kingdom is a park that's more than the sum of its thrills. It's about connecting with nature, appreciating unique creatures, and learning about conservation efforts to support a thriving environment for everybody. Oh, and eating a cheeseburger pod from Snatuli Canteen, because you can't forget about those. Now, it's been a hot minute since Animal Kingdom has added anything new to their park, with the last major addition being Pandora World of Avatar in 2017. But that's all getting ready to change. At the 2023 D23 Expo, Disney Parks Experiences and Products Chairman Josh Tomorrow shared that Disney is building on what makes Animal Kingdom so special with the tropical Americas. New experiences inspired by the beloved film Encanto and the fan favorite character Indiana Jones may be replacing the current Dinoland USA area here. So it still sounds like we're not going to get additional rides in Animal Kingdom. Maybe we will, maybe not, but more so we're going to get replacements for the rides that are in Dino Land currently. At least that's what it sounds like. But wait, there is more. Along with Dino Land being replaced, we're also going to see the 4D attraction It's Tough to Be a Bug replaced by a new Zootopia themed experience. Disney's current concept for the new Zootopia experience will take guests through the different biomes you only receive peaks of during the Zootopia film. You know, while you travel along with Judy Hopps, Nick Wilde, Officer Clawhauser, and several other new and familiar Zootopia characters. We don't yet have a timeline for any of these teased replacements yet, but we'll make sure to keep you updated once we learn more. Now, I love and appreciate Animal Kingdom for its easygoing vibes, unique attractions, innovative food options. It's a beautiful park, one of my favorite places places to go and just chill out. But if you're going to the parks for back-to-back non-stop rides and experiences, Animal Kingdom's atmosphere and offerings may be a bit of a letdown for you. Pros for this one, great for those who love seeing live animals and lots of them. It's not nearly as hectic as other Disney parks. And there are unique attractions you're not going to find anywhere else in the world. Cons here, not a lot of rides here, and new additions are still up in the air and may end up replacing one of your favorite areas of the park. Also, if you're not an animal fan, this park might be less than a half-day park for you. Rank on Animal Kingdom, 8.5 out of 10. 
Now, it was a toss-up for sure, but in the end, I had to give Disney's Hollywood Studios the upper hand over Animal Kingdom, but I'm not happy about it. Disney's Hollywood Studios has had quite the personality change since it originally opened as MGM Studios back in 1989. Shout out to all of you who remember that, because I sure do. Once upon a time, this park focused on bringing you behind the scenes of your favorite movies, but now it's going to make you the star of them. Out of the four Orlando parks, Hollywood Studios definitely provides the most thrills, with rides like Rock and Roller Coaster, Tower of Terror, but that doesn't mean there aren't fun experiences here that the whole family can enjoy. The additions of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Toy Story Land, and the reimagined Fantasmic Show really boosted the family-friendly value of this otherwise thrill-seeker park, and we're hoping Hollywood Studios doesn't stop there because this park could really use another dark ride or two, or at least reimagined versions of its long-running stage shows that would be more popular with guests. Speaking of which, Hollywood Studios did close one of their long-standing stage shows, Voyage of the Little Mermaid, and is getting ready to open up a refreshed version. The new stage show coming to the Animation Courtyard this fall is called The Little Mermaid A Musical Adventure. This is going to be a fully reimagined theatrical production that's inspired by the Walt Disney Animation Studios classic of the same name. So this show is going to be all about the original Little Mermaid movie, not the live action remake, and it's going to be very similar to what we had before. There's going to be puppets, there is going to be Ariel singing her songs, and we're even going to get a new song, Kiss the Girl, will be brand new in this version of the show. But of course, one of the most popular reasons to come to Hollywood Studios these days is to experience Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. This area completely transports you to the planet of Batu, where you'll ride A-tier attractions like Rise of the Resistance and Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. You can try otherworldly spirits at Oga's Cantina, shop for fun merch and creatures at the Marketplace, create your own droids and lightsabers, and a lot more. Hollywood Studios is a park that's filled to the brim with a lot of entertainment and A-tier rides, and it can even feel a little too packed with attractions at times. It's pretty much impossible to do everything here in one day, especially if you want to see all the shows and ride all the rides, so you may want to plan more than one day to visit this park alone. Also, be aware, Hollywood Studios is not very big, so it gets packed. Bottlenecked pathways can be a pretty common occurrence in Hollywood Studios, so make sure you take plenty of breaks during the day and know where you need to go if you need some time away from all the people that this park attracts. Pros for Hollywood Studios, Galaxy's Edge and Toy Story Land are solid recent additions to this park. Live entertainment is good and plentiful with more on the way, and there's a solid variety of experiences for everybody. Cons here, some people miss the days of MGM. The park feels way too bottlenecked and busy at times, and the food here is okay, but the snacks are way better. We're gonna rank this one 8.6 out of 10. Okay, this next one might really surprise you. We are entering the top five park territory, and we're gonna get started on the best of the best with a park you may believe needs to be ranked higher on this list, and that's Magic Kingdom in Orlando. Magic Kingdom yanks on our heartstrings thanks to the sheer amount of nostalgia. This was my, you know, first park. It's what made me into a Disney Parks fan. Here you walk down Main Street USA, watch Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, say hello to your favorite characters during the Festival of Fantasy Parade, befriend those hitchhiking ghosts in the Haunted Mansion, sail over to Tom Sawyer Island, and get the classic Disney World package all in one park. Now, aside from the opening of New Fantasyland in 2012, Magic Kingdom has rested on her laurels for the better part of a decade. That is, until recently. Now we've got the new Tron Light Cycle run over in Tomorrowland, and we've got a lot of up-and-coming Frontierland changes taking place, including the reimagined Country Bear Musical Jamboree and Tiana's Bayou Adventure, both slated to open this summer. But other than that, this is still the park that many people think of when they think of the Orlando Disney parks. Thanks to its immersive lands, many, many rides and attractions, the impressive Cinderella Castle, and the the end-of-the-night fireworks spectacular, Happily Ever After. Since we're on the subject of Happily Ever After, by the way, brace yourself for those end-of-the-night crowds once the fireworks wrap up. Why? Well, just picture thousands of tired and cranky guests all rushing for Magic Kingdom's transportation services when the park's getting ready to close. It's not magical. Now stay tuned because Magic Kingdom's not done adding new stuff to its park just yet. 
During the 2023 Destination 23 event, Josh DeMauro, again, we mentioned him before, and Bruce Vaughn, who's the chief creative officer of Walt Disney Imagineering, said that there are future expansion plans for Magic Kingdom, which will be the largest ever for the park. They reiterated that Imagineers are looking to tell stories beyond Big Thunder Mountain, literally, as if Frontierland needed more construction around it, right? But seriously, the prospects of another land are intriguing and exciting to mull over, and we can't wait to hear more about what might come in the future. If you want to learn more about these park speculations, check out our video titled Disney Just Dropped a Bunch of Clues About Everything Coming to Disney World and Disneyland. It's over on our channel. And yes, that video is thrilling and mysterious. <laughs> Pros for MK, lots to do here. Rides, restaurants, and attractions galore. A really good park for younger kids, since many rides are for all riders, and a classic Disney experience. Cons for this one, this park gets really, really busy. The end of the night crowds are no laughing matter, and Frontierland is a bit of a hot mess right now. Plus, even though there is good food here, not a lot of it is great. Rank, nine out of 10. Okay, we did it. We declared Epcot as the number one park of the Orlando-based Disney bubble and the number four park for Disney worldwide. Just as Disney California Adventure has been an ongoing project of reinvention for years and years and years now, so is Epcot. Epcot entered a six-year transformation season to revitalize the very park that Walt Disney originally wanted as not a theme park, but as an experimental prototype community of tomorrow, aka like a utopian futuristic neighborhood of sorts, but instead of that, we ended up getting another Orlando theme park, which I think was a much better deal for a lot of us, no offense Walt. And though Epcot's six-year transformation season will infamously go down in history as Walcott season, since there were so many construction walls for so long in the park, and they're still there now, this season did indeed bring us a lot of new and fun additions like Space 220, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, Journey of Water inspired by Moana, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, the World Celebration Gardens, and a whole lot more featured in each new Epcot neighborhood. See, while well, Epcot did turn into a neighborhood of sorts, just instead of houses, you've got worlds like World Celebration and Nature and Discovery and Showcase. While each world area has something for you to fall head over heels for, whether it be a ride a restaurant, or even an overall vibe, the World Showcase really sets Epcot apart from all the other Disney parks out there because of its 11 international pavilions, each representing a different country across the globe, including places like China, France, Mexico, Norway, Canada, and others. The World Showcase is like a sampler platter for globetrotters. You get to taste different international drinks and cuisine, shop in cultural marketplaces, explore self-guided museums, and admire the authentic architecture of each individual pavilion. Oh, and don't forget about Epcot's four unique festivals that happen throughout the year too, bringing with them seasonal merch, attractions, shows, and lots of limited time food. Soon, hopefully very soon, Epcot will be opening up a dedicated festival space called Communicor Hall and Plaza for future park festivals. This is gonna serve as the new home base for Epcot's seasonal festivals and live events, bringing these celebrations to the center of Epcot, smack dab inside the World Celebration area. Area. Inside World Celebration, you'll also find the icon of Epcot, Spaceship Earth, who's worth visiting both day and night. But once the sun goes down and the park's getting ready to close, don't forget to check out yet another new part of Epcot, the nighttime fireworks display called Luminous, which takes place over the World Showcase Lagoon every night. While you'd think Epcot would be done with all its newness after six long years of it, we did catch word that the test track ride will eventually be reimagined for its third time ever, sometime in the future, but no construction has started on it just yet. So we'll keep you in the loop and let you know when more activity over at this high-speed ride starts to take place. Overall, this park, much like Animal Kingdom, is so much more than the sum of its rides, though its rides are still definitely worth checking out. Just keep in mind that A, this isn't by any means a ride-heavy park, and B, this is a really spaced out park, not like flighty or anything, but it's got a lot of space, so you're gonna have to do a whole lot of walking. Oh, and C, you might still stumble across construction during your next visit, even after all this time. So pros for Epcot, the World Showcase, mic drop, seasonal festivals add a layer of variety to the park each time you visit, and there's so much new stuff to see and do, and eat. Plus, I don't know, this was my park with my dad, so this will always kind of be my favorite park. All right, cons for Epcot, lots of walking, plus Orlando heat, plus great expanse of concrete and cement equals heat and exhaustion. And festival timeframes can change on you, so make sure you check on the Disney World website so you don't miss out. Also, construction is starting to wrap up, but is still currently 
prevalent. Rank nine out of 10. Okay, we've made it to Disneyland. I mean, what can I say? Disneyland in California is the park that started it all. Disneyland walked so every other park on this list could soar. Walt Disney himself strolled those streets, gazed through the Main Street USA windows, rode the King Arthur Regal carousel, and saw his vision come to life in this very park. Though Magic Kingdom has done an excellent job of capturing that classic Disney essence that Disneyland so expertly exudes, it still can't compete with the nostalgia of the OG. Sure, the Sleeping Beauty Castle here is the tiniest castle of the parks, and yes, some attractions can feel a little dated, but that doesn't mean Disneyland hasn't been doing a great job of keeping up with the times and staying relevant, too. For example, much like Hollywood Studios, Disneyland also has its own Galaxy's Edge, which is an exact carbon copy of the Orlando version. And last year, the Toontown area got a major facelift, bringing reimagined interactive elements to this side of the park, as well as the new El Capitoon Theater, which houses the trackless dark ride, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Again, this ride is the same one you're gonna experience in Hollywood Studios. The only real difference is the queue area, which is a lot more impressive in the El Capitoon. And like Magic Kingdom, Tiana's Bayou Adventure is also opening up in Disneyland this year, but leading up to Tiana's Bayou Adventure, New Orleans Square opened up a new Tiana's Palace quick service so you can get the full Princess and the Frog experience once the Log Flume ride finally opens up to the public. Disneyland also likes to add some limited time spice throughout the year with different fireworks spectaculars and popular seasonal snacks and even Disneyland After Dark themed events. So thanks to all of these unique rotating offerings, you're bound to experience Disneyland in a fresh way each time you visit. But even if those rotating offerings didn't exist, there's still so much to do in Disneyland during your visit that it's worth multiple visits. Ride Hyperspace Mountain, grab a bakery good or two from Jolly Holiday Bakery, watch the Disneyland band play versions of your favorite Disney tunes, and allow yourself to be a kid again while visiting a park that Walt Disney himself originally deemed as a world of yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy. Now, pros for Disneyland. This is the OG Disney park. Without this one, none of the others would exist. Also, so many top tier snacks. Bring on the churros, chimichangas, street corn. Disneyland food is probably the best food of the domestic parks, hands down. And there are tons of attractions, including limited time offerings to fill your day. Cons here, the castle is tiny compared to everybody else's, so it doesn't look as beautiful in pictures from the end of Main Street. And while I find it charming, some may think areas of the park are a bit dated compared to what all the other parks have to offer. But personally, I love it. Disneyland certainly isn't as big as Disney World, so if you're looking for more of a week-long getaway, the East Coast might be a better option for you too. Rank on this one, 9.5 out of 10. All right, y'all, when it comes to Disney parks, Japan just gets it. Taking home the silver today is Tokyo Disneyland, which probably has the best, most impressive lineup of rides and attractions that I've ever seen in a single Disney park. It basically mashes up Magic Kingdom in Disney World and Disneyland in California, takes the best from both of those and smooshes them together into Tokyo Disneyland. Now, yes, it is fascinating that Tokyo Disneyland and its next door neighbor are at the top of our list because the Tokyo Disney parks aren't even owned by Disney. They're owned by the Oriental Land Company, which operates under a license from the Walt Disney Company. So basically, this company gets to choose which Disney attractions they deem worthy to be added to their parks, while also having way more freedom to create other immersive and experiential Disney-fied attractions too. Win-win. Now, when I said Tokyo Disneyland took the best of both Magic Kingdom and Disneyland and smooshed them together, they also somehow make them even better with updated effects, updated ride systems, and updated artwork. And in addition to that impressive lineup of classics, Tokyo Disneyland also has multiple unique headliners like Pooh's Honey Hunt, Monsters Inc. Ride and Go Seek, and Enchanted Tale of Beauty and the Beast, which is an absolutely mind-blowing ride. Now, Tokyo Disneyland isn't just a theme park, though. It's a whole culture from the popcorn buckets to the little happy dance that guests do each time they ride the new happy dance with Baymax to the unique snacks that are attractions in and of themselves to the over-the-top Disney bounding to the love of all things Duffy the Bear and to the Disney parade dedication. There's just something about the entire Tokyo Disneyland scene that really just makes a space its own little country. 
But all that glitters is not necessarily gold. This park gets packed, especially around holiday seasons. I mean, I've never seen a Disney park so busy and I've been to Magic Kingdom during spring break, so you know that's saying something. Just be prepared for heavy, heavy crowds during your next visit, especially if you go during Halloween or Christmas or Easter or weekends. <laughs> And if you want to learn what other things you need to expect before your big Tokyo Disney trip, be sure to download our free Tokyo Disneyland quick guide by scanning the QR code you see now or heading to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Tokyo after this. By the way, we also have a bunch of videos about Tokyo, including an ultimate guide to Tokyo Disney and what I wish I'd known before I went to Tokyo Disney, which talks a lot about toilets. Anyway, go check those out after this too. Pros for Tokyo Disneyland? Literally, the rides are going to make you weak in the knees. They are incredible. The local pride that people have for this park is phenomenal. The fireworks and parades are Disney at its finest. And you can ride stuff and see stuff here you can't see anywhere else anymore, like Splash Mountain or Country Bear Jamboree in its original form. Now, cons, the restaurants and quick services are a nightmare to wait for. Thank goodness they're starting to introduce mobile order, which is great. But otherwise, you could very easily find yourself waiting an hour or more to get into a fast food restaurant. And it's also nearly impossible to book the very popular table service restaurants. Also, several of the variety shows use a lottery system, so you may or may not get to see them just based on luck and just the crowds, especially the morning crowds. They're just overwhelming. Rank 9.5 out of 10. And here we are, folks. We have finally made it to the best Disney park in the entire world world and that park is Tokyo Disney Sea. Disney Sea is so different from all the other Disney parks that it almost doesn't feel like a Disney park at all. It feels like a whole other world stuffed to the brim with steampunk attractions, under the sea grottos, an entire Venice, mysterious islands, fortress explorations. I'm thinking about it now and it's just there the sections are so different from one another you almost can't even imagine the transitions between them. How I like to explain Tokyo Disney Sea as compared to a place like Magic Kingdom or even Epcot is that in Magic Kingdom and Epcot, you see the facade and there's nothing behind it. But in Disney Sea, there's the facade and then there's a facade behind it and then there's an entire town behind that and then a ride behind that and then there's a giant ship. So it just never stops. And even if your eyes aren't actually gonna land on any specific thing, you know that there's just more and more and more behind it that is completely solid and real and themed. I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just mind blowing to anybody walking in for the first time. Now, along with its unique rides like Aquatopia, my very, very favorite, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Sinbad Storybook Voyage, Journey to the Center of the Earth, still don't know what's going on in that ride. You can also look forward to trying interesting snacks, watching shows across the water. You're in Tokyo Disney Sea, so expect lots of water, lots and lots of water, all the water. And there's just so many great snacks, but you could spend an entire day just eating the snacks there and not get to all the best ones. Anyway, but when it comes to snacks, again, be prepared to wait in legitimately long lines just to purchase a flavored popcorn, since popcorn culture is a whole other type of dedication out here. Think Tokyo Disney Sea sounds great now? Just wait until this summer, though. On June 6th, 2024, Fantasy Springs will become Tokyo Disney Sea's eighth port, leading you into the immersive realms of Arendelle, Neverland, and Rapunzel's Forest. Literally, there's so much to unpack in each of these new areas, since all three lands are going to feature new rides, new restaurants, and new ways to interact with your favorite characters and stories. So if you want to learn more about what to expect from the soon-to-be Fantasy Springs, I'm going to link our brand new look inside Fantasy Springs post hot off the presses and over on the DFV website down in the description. I cannot wait to walk inside this land. So pros for Disney Sea, the most unique park experience in the world with immersive of lands and breathtaking theming. Rides and shows are all top notch, and there are three brand new immersive lands coming this summer, as well as a brand new incredible hotel. Yeah, I didn't even start talking about the hotels. Cons here, the best snacks can mean really, really long lines, so just be prepared. And again, prepare for intense crowds. I have never seen entry crowds like I have seen in Tokyo before. And Fantasy Springs will be using a type of virtual queue system referred to as a standby pass, which you must have in order to enter this section of the park, period. You can't even get in 
without getting a standby pass. So make sure to study up on the Tokyo Disney Sea website to learn more. Don't expect to go to Tokyo Disney Sea this summer and just randomly walk into this brand new land. There's a lot of rules and a lot of stuff you gotta figure out and wait in virtual queues for and all kinds of things. This has been my life for the past six months trying to get myself into Fantasy Springs. So just a heads up on that. If you wanna go to Fantasy Springs, might be good kind of like wait six months or a year until those initial crowds start dying down. But rank for Tokyo Disney Sea, y'all, 10 out of 10. Okay, we did it. We ranked them all. You might be really, really mad about it. You may really, really agree with me. I don't know. But let me know which Disney park is the one you think deserves to be at the top of the list. And don't forget to download our free Tokyo Disney guide, even if you just want to look it over for funsies to see how different these parks are from the domestic ones. You can find it over on DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Tokyo. And if you're curious about the bathrooms and the toilets, go watch our Tokyo videos. We've got a playlist here on the channel. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.